Walker, I'm the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church, and we're on a series in prophecy, and we're talking about the rapture of the church, and we're looking at this exciting subject, uh, and we're focusing today on Jesus' teaching on the rapture. A lot of people think Jesus didn't teach on the rapture, that it was the Apostle Paul, but in, in fact, the foundational teaching is given by Jesus. And so, let's go to Matthew 24, and uh, this is the, the sermon he did on prophecy, called the Olivet Discourse. And Matthew 24, verse 3 says that, As Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? Now, these things are actually, Jesus had just told them that the temple would be destroyed and not one stone would be left upon the other. And that was fulfilled literally in AD 70. And so they wanted to know, when will these things be? What will be the sign for these things to happen? And then they said, and what is the sign of your coming? They knew that the Messiah would come again in power and glory, and they wanted to know what would the sign be. And then they asked for a third sign, and what was the sign of the end of the age? And this is the word that means not the final end of the age, but the consummation of the age, the, the final winding down, the final period of the age, which is actually a technical term for the tribulation. What is the sign for the tribulation? Now, a sign always happens before the event. So, for instance, if you want a sign to get to Oxford, Oxford in five miles, then that sign happens before the event. And so Jesus' sermon here is all about the signs that would take place before a certain event. Well, for instance, he gave the signs of, you know, the temp when, how would they know that the temple was about to be destroyed? And then, in his message, he gave the signs that of events that would happen just before his second coming in power and glory. And thirdly, he gave the signs for what would happen just before the end of the age, the tribulation. And that's what we're going to focus on today. And so he talked about the temple in Luke 21. And then, uh, you know, if you want more detail about this, I do get my book on end time prophecy. I go into this in more detail. And then he describes the signs of his second coming in power and glory. And then he goes on to give the signs of being in the end time just before Jesus, uh, sorry, he gave the signs of being in the end time, just before the tribulation. And I want to show you that we are living in that very time that Jesus described. That's where Jesus gave the parable of the fig tree. And that's what I want to uh, just remind you of this time. Jesus g gave us as the main sign <clears throat> that we live in the time just before the tribulation is the parable of the fig tree. And the fig tree represents Israel. And so the sign that we are in the end time is the rebirth of Israel as a nation. Well, we saw that last time. He said that when the fig tree puts forth its leaves again, when you see the fig tree that had been cut down in the first century, rise up again as a nation, then you will know that you are in the end time. And he said, this generation that sees the fig tree will not all pass away before all things are fulfilled. And so that tells us we're living in that last generation. Then, after that, he goes on to talk about the very final sign that the tribulation was about to happen. And this sign, and this event will happen just the moment before the tribulation happens, and that is the rapture of the church. That's in verse 36. Matthew 24, verse 36. Just after he's talked about the fig tree, he said the next thing that's going to happen on God's calendar is the rapture of the church. He said, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And whenever it talks about no man knowing the day and the hour, it's talking about the rapture, as we're going to see. Let's read on. Verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. For, as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, 
and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. I want you to notice he's talking about one event. And it's the event that comes just before the end of the age. It's the event that brings in the end of the age, really. And it's the rapture of the church. And he says, no one knows except God what, when it's going to happen, what hour your Lord is coming. It's talking about it's a coming of the Lord. Well, I want you to notice this teaching of Jesus is foundational on the rapture. The tribulation is compared to Noah's flood. He says it's as in the days of Noah. And he talks about the fact that the Noah's flood was a worldwide judgment. And it suddenly came upon the whole world, taking them by surprise. And in the same way, the tribulation is going to suddenly come on the whole world. It's going to be a time of judgment. And he says, as in the days of Noah, men will, will eat and drink and marry and be given in marriage. In other words, life is going to be going on just as normal. And yes, they, there's Noah gave them a warning that judgment was about to call, come. And in the same way, we give the warning to the world that judgment is about to come down upon the world. But most people ignore it. And then the final sign, before the judgment falls, the final sign is the disappearance of the believers. You see, Noah disappeared into the ark and God shut the door. And then the judgment came down. And this was the point Jesus was making. He's saying, in the very time that Noah entered the ark, then suddenly the flood came and took them all away. And in the same way, the moment the believers disappear into Christ, then the tribulation will come down upon the earth and sweep the whole planet. Wow. And so the believers... Before the flood came, it says they were put into the ark and they were lifted above the judgment. They were lifted to safety. And this is a picture of the rapture. And now the believers are above the flood. They're looking down upon it. Praise God. We disappear into Christ because Christ Jesus has taken the judgment for us. And so we don't belong to the time of judgment in the tribulation. And then it describes the rapture. It says there'll be two men in the field. One will be taken. Yes, he's taken in the rapture. He'll suddenly disappear, and the other one will be left. Two women, likewise. Now, they're not being taken in judgment, because the word used here for being taken is not being taken in judgment, but it's the word that was used, for instance, when Joseph took Mary to be his wife. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. In the rapture, the bridegroom is going to take us to be his bride. Hallelujah. Jesus will take us. Hallelujah. And that's going to be the rapture of the church so that we can be with him forever. And then Jesus goes on to describe, verse 43, he says, But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Notice he says, this coming of the Lord to take the believers, to be with him forever, is going to happen. You don't know when it's going to happen. It's when you don't expect it to happen. Just when you think you worked out when Jesus isn't going to come for the next five years, he's going to come when you don't expect him. You see? And this passage introduces the other description of what it's going to be like. He describes it as a thief. The thief in the night. Whenever you hear about the thief in the night, that's talking about the rapture. That's not talking about when Jesus comes in power and glory to bring in a brand new day. It's talking about him coming secretly at night to take something from the earth. That's the believers. And so he, here Jesus talks about the thief coming, but coming at a time that is not announced. The thief, you see, comes and he goes. He comes suddenly and he goes unnoticed in the middle of the night. That's totally different to the description of Jesus coming in power and glory as the sunrise 
bringing the time of darkness to the end. I want you to notice how a thief comes. A thief comes unannounced. He doesn't give a warning. You know, when a thief came to our house once, he wasn't successful, but he, he left quickly. But I was upset because he didn't give me a warning. He didn't put a letter in my, through my door saying, I'll be visiting your house tonight to take your things. He didn't do that. He didn't announce it. And I want to tell you that Jesus isn't going to tell you in advance when the rapture is going to happen. You've just got to be ready. It's going to just happen like that. A thief comes suddenly and quickly and he takes the precious things from the house. Jesus is going to come. This is a perfect description of the rapture. You see, the world is sleeping in the dark, thinking everything's carrying on as normal. And then the thief comes suddenly and silently and takes the precious things. That's us. Praise God. And the world suddenly will discover a billion people missing, all believers. And to the world, it will seem like a thief has come in the night. But actually, he's not a thief. He's only taking what belongs to him, and that's the believers. If you don't belong to Jesus, then he won't come to take you. You'll be left on the earth to go through the tribulation. Now, after the rapture is a judgment of us as servants. We'll stand before him and give an account as to how we've lived our life. That's in verse 45. He says, who then is a faithful and wise servant? See, we won't be judged for condemnation, but we'll be judged for how we've been as servants of God. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he finds, will find, will find him so doing. See, if God finds you walking with him, serving him when he returns, then you will be blessed and you'll be greatly rewarded in the rapture. Assuredly, I say to you, he will make him ruler over all of his goods. Hallelujah. This is the foundational passage on the rapture of the church. Jesus says, he's going to come, and he's going to come and rescue us. Praise God. Well, to the world, the rapture will be as the thief in the night. But to us, who belong to him, it will be the bridegroom coming for his bride. And we see this in Jesus' teaching in John 14, verse 1 to 3. These are the tender words now of the bridegroom speaking to us, speaking to his bride promising that he is coming again to fetch his bride. You see, the way marriages worked in, in the East in those days was that, first of all, the marriage contract would be made, the covenant would be made, they would be betrothed. He would pay the bridal price, and the covenant would be accepted. And once they were in covenant, they were betrothed, and then the bridegroom would go away to his father's house and he would prepare the marital home and when everything was ready and when the father said son you can go now and get your bride he would then return and fetch her and carry her back to the home and then they would be together forever well we're betrothed to the Lord if we're believers through the blood of Jesus he's paid the price for us and if we've accepted him we've accepted that covenant we belong to him and someday soon, he's gone away to prepare a place for us, but he's coming back to fetch his bride and to bring him back so that we'll be with him forever. This is John 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I, know, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Do you know what Jesus was saying here? He's saying, I'm, going, I'm coming, and I'm going to take you and receive you to myself. And they said, we don't know the way to heaven. And Jesus said, I am the way. What he's saying is, I'm not just going to show you the way. I am going to personally escort you to heaven. I am the way. I'm going to take you there myself. And in the rapture, Jesus is going to come for us, and he's going to personally escort us back to heaven. Are you ready for liftoff? Are you ready to stand before the Lord? You need to get ready. 
You know, how can you be ready? It's going to be like this. You know, if you imagine a table with uh, kind of uh, iron filings and metal pieces, but also some wood, some paper, different materials there, plastic. When the, a big magnet is put above, then only the things that are made of the same material as that magnet, that iron things, will rise and meet the magnet. The plastic things, the wooden things, are not going to be attracted. They'll remain where they are. So when Jesus returns, if you have the Holy Spirit live in you, you'll be magnetized and you'll be raised to be with him. But if you're just plastic, you might say you're a Christian, but you're just plastic, you're just wood, you're not going to rise in the rapture. You need to make sure you're ready. You need to make sure that you've received the Lord into your heart. Yes, the rapture is coming soon. He's the thief in the night. He's the bridegroom coming for his future bride. Hallelujah. And the third thing I want to tell you about the rapture is it's the manifestation of the morning star. And I want to tell you about the morning star because Jesus talks about that he is the morning star. This is a wonderful promise of the rapture. The morning star, you see, appears before sunrise. If you are awake early enough, while it's still dark, a bright star comes above the horizon. It's actually the planet Venus. And it shines, and it, as it were, it announces that the new day is coming soon. It's still dark, but you'll see that morning star heralding the morning. And soon after that, arises the sun and a new day has dawned now i want you to turn now to 2 peter chapter 1 verse 19 and in this passage we will see that there are three manifestations of christ's glory three revelations of christ and uh, let's read it he says we have firstly we have the prophetic word confirmed which you do well to heed as a light which shines in a dark place. And that's the light, the revelation of Christ in the words of the Bible. That's what we're living by right now. He says, until the day dawns, that sunrise, spelled S-O-N, rise, praise God. The day is coming when Jesus will return in his glory as the Son of God. He's the Son of Righteousness with healing in his wings. And he will change the darkness of this world right now into bright light. And that's the future manifestation of the glory of God. But there's another manifestation that's going to happen first. And the morning star rises in your hearts. You see, no one misses the dawning of the day when the Son of God will shine throughout the earth. But before that happens, there's something else that happens, which is the appearance of the morning star. While it's still darkness, he will reveal himself to those who are watching. Many people will be asleep. They won't even know about the morning star. But those who are awake will see him as the morning star. Hallelujah. And I want you to notice, it says, that this manifestation is something that happens in our hearts, in our spirits. The morning star will rise in your hearts. Let me tell you about this. That's exciting. Praise God. It tells you that sunrise is soon, but those asleep in the dark don't see it. What is it? It's what happens at the rapture. At the rapture, there will be a manifestation of the glory of Christ. You'll be walking around, doing your normal life, and then suddenly... Jesus will be manifested in your hearts as the morning star. There will be a release of the glory of God, and you will be transformed into his image. You'll receive a glorious body. Hallelujah. And meanwhile, the world will continue in darkness for a while. The tribulation will happen. And then, soon after, he will appear as the son of righteousness with healing in his wings to bring in the new day. But first, for those who are awake, those who are watching, he will manifest himself as the morning star. That's what he promises in Revelation 22, 16. He says, I'm the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. He says, before I come to this earth in, as the glory of the, as the son of God, I will come to you personally and give you the morning star manifestation and you'll be raptured. Revelation 2, 28 is his promise. He says, I will give him, that's the believer, 
I will give him the morning star. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the morning star to arise in your hearts? Are you ready for that wonderful moment when you'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye and you will rise and you will meet him in the air? Hallelujah. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Hallelujah. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? Hallelujah. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You see, it's coming soon. It's coming soon. Hallelujah. He says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, verse 58, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Yes, the day is coming soon. Jesus is coming back for his bride. Do you belong to him? Are you ready? You need to make sure you're ready. Have you truly received Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior? Does his spirit live inside you? Do you know that your sins are forgiven? Have you given your life to him? You need to prove that you have genuine faith by a changed life. That truly you don't just call him your Lord, but you do what he says. Are you ready for liftoff? Are you ready to stand before the Lord and give an account of your life? You need to be ready. I want to pray for you right now. I want you to check your heart to know that truly you are ready. Lord, I pray for each person living, listening to this broadcast. Lord, if, they're, if they have not given their life to you fully, I pray that right now they will turn to you and ask you to forgive all their sins and invite you to be in their heart, to be Lord and Savior of all, that they will not hold back and that, Lord, they will prove that their faith is real by the life that they live. Lord, help us to be ready. We thank you, Lord, that you are coming soon to take us home. Hallelujah. Come, Lord Jesus. Well, tune in next week. And we're going to talk more about this exciting subject. There's so much more we've still got to talk about from Jesus' teaching, from Paul's teaching, from the Apostle John's teaching. We're going to see what they say about the rapture. And, you know, as, you, as your heart and mind is filled with these truths, you're going to start living a life inspired by the expectancy that Jesus is going to come soon. And, uh, and meanwhile, you can also check out our website, www.oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk and there's a lot of free teachings on there on prophecy and other subjects. If you've enjoyed this teaching on prophecy, I'm sure you will uh, benefit from my book on end time prophecy which will really bring you into a good understanding of the subject and what an exciting subject it is. And this book on end time prophecy you can get by uh, phoning in or uh, writing in to us and uh, it's just for you it will be seven pounds and as you study the fact that Jesus is coming soon you will want to get the gospel out to as many people as possible but sometimes we need to know what is the gospel and that's where this set of CDs called the anointing message is all about the anointing message is eight CDs and that will just be for fifteen pounds and that tells you what the gospel is all about. It gives some great revelation of the power of the gospel. And so please do take advantage of these teaching materials. Do write to us at Oxford Bible Church, 363 Banbury Road, Oxford, OX27 PL, or phone us at 01865 515086 and make your order. Thank you. At Oxford Bible Church, we have a vision to get God's word out to the nations. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth. And the truth, the truth you know, that will set you free. People need the in-depth in teaching of God's word to grow and to be fruitful, effective Christians. And so we want to broadcast this teaching across Africa, across Asia, across the world. But to make this possible, we need your help. It, we need partners to join with us 
and, uh, and support us in prayer and uh, in other ways. And if you are interested in partnering with us and, and this ministry, please write to us. And uh, write to us at Oxford Bible Church, 363 Banbury Road, Oxford, OX2 7PL. Or call us on 01865 515 086. We'd love to hear from you.